Hi, I'm James Patterson. Hi, I'm miserable. Miserable? Is that your first or last name? Stop kidding, James. You know my name. Yep, Rafe Katchadorian, famous author of Middle School, The Worst Years of My Life. James, you have no idea of the pain and suffering of my existence, the feeling of total desperation and intimidation and anxiety and trepidation and- Please, stop. You don't want to see a grown man cry, do you? James Patterson crying? No, that would weird me out. So what can I do to cheer you up? Get me out of here. Rafe, that gives me an idea. Break out the Twinkies. James Patterson has an idea. Get me out of here. That's a great title for your next book. Surprise. I've already written it. Middle school, get me out of here. You set us up. You led the conversation right where you wanted it. Yes. Is that a bad thing? I guess not. James, may I ask a serious question? Shoot. How do I get out of here? Graduate. Hello again, everyone. I'm still James Patterson. I'd like you to meet my favorite son, Jack. My only son, Jack. Hi, everyone. He's happy today. He got the day off from school, middle school, actually. Yep, and now I get to interview my dad. Uh, and I'm going to grill him. First question. Everyone knows you as the world-famous author, James Patterson. I hope so. But to me, you're just dad. So, dad, what were you like in middle school? Did you have as big of an imagination as Rafe? Well, I couldn't draw. I was, I've never been able to draw. I still can't draw. But I did have a big imagination. I was a big storyteller. I loved to tell stories. We used to live out in the woods, so I would go out in the woods and just tell stories all the time. And I still love to tell stories. What would you do if you had to do something else for a living? If I had to do something else for a living, I kind of would love to run a Hollywood movie studio. I love to make movies. I love to watch movies. So that would be kind of cool. But more than anything else, I love to write the stories that I do. Out of all the books out there, which one do you wish you wrote? Um, I don't know. I, um, I, I'm, I'm really happy to have written the books that I have written. I, I love the middle school series. We have a new middle school book that we're just coming out with like today. Middle school, get me out of here. Um, yeah. What book of yours are you most proud of? Um, I, you know, it's hard to pick. I can pick you as my favorite son because you're my only son. And I, you know, the books, I, there's so many that I like. Um, Suzanne's Diary for Nicholas is one of my, it's kind of a love story. I love the Alice Cross stories. The middle school books, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy with. Maximum Ride uh, is, is cool. Were you ever worried that I wouldn't go out to like books even, given that you're a writer and all? <laughs> I was afraid that you weren't going to grow up. I'm still a little worried. Um, but uh, I, no, I, I thought you would like books. I tell you, though, when you were on eight, your mother and I, what we did is we said, uh, this summer you're going to read a book every day. And you said, do I have to? And we said, yeah, but we're going to go and find cool books for you. So we went out. And any parent can do this, and they should. And we went out, and we got the, uh, some of the Warrior books, and we got some Percy Jackson, and we got Maximum Ride. And by the end of the summer, your reading was so much better. It was unbelievable. It was, you were twice as good a reader as you'd been at the beginning of the summer. If I wanted to be a good storyteller like you, what would you have me do? Um, I, I, I think that you know, the key to writing stories is you just keep writing. You, you write, and you write, and you write. And uh, you, know, you, you already are a good storyteller. You're a good writer. Do you think I am a good storyteller? I really do think you're a good storyteller. You, you are. You know, in, 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 as you know, in your school, in Jack's school, um, for the last six weeks, every English class, every kid in the, in the class has to deliver a one-minute um, speech that they wrote the night before. And, and your writing in these speeches is terrific. It's very, very good. It's charming. It's, it's coherent. It's everything you'd want. I mean, you're writing like a college kid right now. 90% right? eye contact. In my opinion. 90% eye contact. No just like looking right now. down in your introduction or conclusion. Or your interview. Do you think I could be a writer someday? I think you could be a writer if you wanted to be, for sure. You're a very good writer. I'm not sure that that's what you want to do. I think you want to be president mm -hmm. of the United States or something. But I think a writer would be a higher calling. Yeah. <laughs> if you could meet anyone, alive or dead, who would it be and why? Oh, who would I like to meet? I'd like to meet John Kennedy. Um, I'd like to spend some time with Clinton. I'd like to spend some time with President Obama. Big on the presidents. I'd like to talk to the Pope. Uh, There's probably, probably any world leader I'd like, to, I'd like to meet. Can reading really change people's lives and how? 
reading really can change people's lives, and that's the main reason that we're here, because it can change the lives of pretty much everyone watching this, this webcast, and there are a lot of kids watching this, and teachers watching this, this webcast. And what you have to understand is, one, the more you read, the better you get at it, and the better you read, the easier school is going to be, uh, the better person you're going to be, the more interesting person you're going to be, and ultimately, um, the more choices you're going to have in life. Because if you read well, you're going to do better in high school. You'll have a better chance to go to college if that's what you want to do. You'll get a better job. Everything will be better. You'll make more money. You'll, it, it's just it, reading is the key to everything, pretty much everything in life. And, and I, I can't understate that. It's just so, so, so important. What's your favorite part of middle school, the worst years of my life? Uh, that section where I put you in there, remember that? Oh, I didn't put you in this book. The, uh, you know, I'll tell you what I really like about middle school, uh, and I do urge everybody out there to take a peek at it. It's a really, it's a very funny book, but it's also very touching. We were just out in Hollywood, and, and there's a director and a, and a writer who were involved in, in making it into a movie now. And when we went to all the studios, uh, people were laughing like crazy, and, they, and, they, and, and then they kept saying how touched they were by parts of the story. What's your next book for people who can't get enough of Ray? Well, for people who can't get enough of Rafe, we have Middle School Get Me Out of Here, which is just out. Um, I think it's even a little better than Middle School, The Worst Years of My Life. Uh, similarly, it's very funny. Rafe continues to get in impossible jams, this time in the big city, so that's a little different for him. He goes to his grandmother's for a while, but, but it's also very touching. There's something that happens in the story that, that, that will move everybody. Okay. That's all I have for today. That's it? We're, you have no more questions? I can't believe you. Yes, it is. You don't have one more question? Okay. How great. did I do? You did great. You did okay. good. I don't think you're ready for, for NBC or CBS News, but uh, you did very well. Thanks, Jack. You know, everyone knows my favorite parts of middle school, the worst years of my life. Here's some kids talking about their favorite parts of the book. School bully Miller lifted me up like a hundred pound dumbbell. He got right up in my face and I could see the cheese puffs in his teeth. My brain was turning into guacamole. Guacamole. This year would be about as much fun as a never ending case of diarrhea. If there's one teacher you don't want to mess with, it's Mrs. Ruth Donatella, AKA Ruthless Donatella. Or as I like to call her, Dragon Lady. <laughs> Nobody gets kids reading like James Patterson. Okay, we're back with Andrea Spooner, who has been the editor on all of my books for younger readers, starting with Maximum Ride series, the Witch and Wizard series, and now she's edited Middle School, The Worst Years of My Life, and middle school, get me out of here, so don't blame me, blame her. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm surprised I have time to be here given all the books James is writing these days. Also, we have kids from Palm Beach Day Academy and from JFK Middle School to talk about writing and reading in middle school. Um, why don't you introduce yourselves and tell us what you like to read, especially if they're my books. <laughs> no, any books are okay. Hi, I'm Taylor and I'm in fifth grade. And my favorite series are the Pendragon series and the Percy Jackson series. Okay, I'm glad that I wrote the Percy Jackson books. <laughs> yeah. Hi, my name is Cornell. I'm 12 years old and I like to read the Harry Potter series. Good, good choice. My name's Allison. I'm in fourth grade and I like mystery books and I enjoyed mystery books. Cool. My name is Norma and I'm 14 and I love paranormal books. My name is Oliver, my, I'm 12 years old, and I like the Daniel X series. Cool. My, oh, what a good guy you are, Oliver. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> my name is Mohini, I'm 13 years old, and um, I appreciate the adventure books like Maximum Ride and The Thrill. See, these two guys, are, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to have you all here today to talk about books and how much you love reading. And I'm going to get things started with a question I'm sure you all have for James, which is, you write so many books. Mm. How do you get all of these ideas, especially the ideas for your books about t uh, for teens and uh, kids? Well, I mean, kind of anything can stimulate it. I might have an idea for a book just based on this, today's interviews. 
Um, I do I, I, just a lot of things in life. You'll read newspaper things. You'll see things in the movies. You'll see things walking along the street. I keep a big, big notebook of the ideas that I have. It's about this thick. It's about 500 ideas in there. So I'll be writing until I'm three or 400 years old. <laughs> and I'll be editing until yeah, I'm three years old. Yeah, excellent. It's a deal. <laughs> well, now let's check in with the book club. Taylor, do you have a question you want to ask uh, Mr. Patterson? Do you enjoy reading as much as you like writing? I do. Uh, I actually now, because I'm doing so many kids' books, I've finally gotten where I'm like, um, <laughs> I used to read three or four books a week, and now I'm down to like one or two books a week. But I do, I, I love to read. And, you know, the, the big reason we're here is, is uh, you know, to get kids more involved in reading because it's just going to, it's going to help you so much as, as you grow older. It really will. James, what's your favorite kids' book right now, and why would you recommend that other students read it? Uh, my favorite kids' book right now is probably The Book Thief. Book Thief is a little tough, uh, and the first 50 pages are a little slow, but that's one of those books that you, you will remember for the rest of your life. It's, it's a really, really good book. And then I like a lot of the fun things, too. I like the Percy Jackson books. Mm -hmm. um, there, there, there are a lot of good books out there for kids. We have a lot of uh, questions from your fans on Facebook, and um, Therese asks, which of your characters is your favorite and why, and is there anyone that you relate to the most? Oh, uh, you know, that's really hard. Um, there's so many, you know, you write these books and you kind of, you know, get caught up in all of them. I really do like the middle school books a lot. I, Rafe, I find very enjoyable. And, and what I love in particular about that series is that it's funny, but there's some real serious subjects uh, that, that are dealt with. I have a book coming out in, in December called I Funny, and that's about a kid, a young kid, kid, kid in middle school who wants to be a stand-up comedian. So he like learns every joke ever. Mm -hmm. He studies every comedian, and that's, I think, another particularly cool one. James Dee Dee, your fan, asks, was there any hero or villain that you had the most fun creating? Any hero or villain? Well, in my adult books, certainly. We have a lot of <laughs> very bad villains. Um, in the kid books, not so much. Max, you know, Max of Maximum Ride is, is a good heroine. She's, mm -hmm. she's pretty exciting. And um, the thing about the kids in Maximum Ride is they really have to learn to take responsibility for themselves. No parents, no. They just got to go out there and kind of survive in the world. And they're pretty young. Mm -hmm. They range from, from seven or eight years old up to about 14. And that's a hard thing. And, and, and the thing about the Maximum Ride kids, they have wings, but they're retractable wings because mm -hmm. they could just be sitting here like this and you wouldn't know, but they <laughs> not go the wings. <laughs> yeah. now it's, that's pretty cool. Norma, it's your turn to ask the question. I would like to know, do you have an active imagination? No. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid I do. Guilty as charged. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, my, my real strength as a writer is I do have a very big imagination. And Andrea knows that because I'll give her an idea for a book about every week. Mm -hmm. And she's like, enough, please. <laughs> we can't take any more of your ideas. But she'll say, well, that's a good one or that's not so good or whatever. So, yes, I do have a lot of ideas. And, and you all can, too. You all can, too. But you have to kind of practice it. That's something sometimes they don't, they, some, some schools they don't think enough about, that kind of thing. It would be good like, if every day you had to go in and you just put down an idea for something. And next day you just put down an idea for something. You know, because a lot of times, like my son Jack will come home and I go, well, how is school today? Good. What do you mean by that? What do you, you know, go a little deeper. I will, I will go with him. That was an essay question. So I, I want an essay, I want a longer answer, you know. And sometimes when we think a little deeper, it, you know, more stuff starts to come out. Our brains are working a little harder. Well, on that topic, the eighth graders at Cascade Middle School in Vancouver, Washington, have had a lot of great questions. Actually, my favorite was, "How has your imagination changed from when you were younger?" I thought you were going to ask like five questions at the same time. That would be really cool. <laughs> How has it changed from when you were younger to now, if at all? Um, you know, I mean, I just have a lot more discipline mm -hmm. as a writer and a thinker, and um, I, I don't, I don't think it's changed a lot. I mean, it was always kind of wild, and, and you just think about what about, what about, what about. Um, um, I, I just think I'm, I'm a little more disciplined in terms of what I'll actually try to turn into a story. Mm -hmm. Oliver, what is your burning question for James? I would like to know what was middle school like for you? It, it was a Catholic school. So it was pretty tough. And in those days, they would do stuff like hit your knuckles with a ruler and things like that. So it was a little different world. 
Um, you know, but it was, you learned a lot. Uh, you learned a lot of, you know, you, you were, nobody, there was no messing around. I mean, you, you weren't going to kid around in there. Her, her sister would come along and, and wrap you. <laughs> Um, so I think I think kids were a little bit more behaved. Not that I'm suggesting that that's a good thing to be hit by a ruler, but that was the world that I grew up in. So it was very different. Um, okay, so she says great even if I say something dumb. <laughs> it's that's so part cool. of my job. <laughs> yeah. um, Mohini, can you stump James with a question today? Yes. Yes. <laughs> were you ever a good reader in elementary school? I, I was a good reader. I was a good student. I just, I didn't love reading the way I do now. And I think part of the problem was when I was going to school, we just read a lot of things that none of us liked. And I think it's really important in school that at least some of the books and some of the stuff that you read, you really love. And, you, and the minute you get done with it, you just want to read another book. I think unfortunately now, sometimes we get a little too caught up in well, we've got to know about these six books because that's what the state is going to test us on or whatever, as opposed to, no, we just want to, we just want to become good readers in middle school. That's, that's really the main job, that you come out of middle school and you're really a good reader. And then, you know, then you can branch out more. Okay, well, I want to read this, Connor. You know, if they taught movies in school, it wouldn't be a bad thing to do, but if they started with, uh, you know, like some really tough German... Um, uh, film director and everybody go, oh yeah, I really don't like movies. So sometimes you want to ease into these things. You want to ease into reading with some stuff that people really like. Um, you know, we, we all like movies because we, we, we see a lot of movies that we love early. Well, on that subject, James, can you tell us what you would recommend for a good summer reading program for kids? Well, uh, we're, we're actually just putting together for Read Kiddo Read, which is a site that I have, which the teachers and librarians, school librarians, and you guys can check out, and your parents, Read Kiddo Read. It's, so we're going to put together our, our summer reading list. We're right in the middle of it right now. So in, in, a, in a week or so, you'll be able to go to readkiddoread.com and, and pick out 30 or 40 books for each of you to read this summer. Is that too much, 30 or 40? <laughs> no. Yeah. That's a good number. That's a good number. Let's hear from Taylor again. Um, what's your favorite pastime other than writing? My favorite pastime other than writing, I'm, I'm a big family person. So I really, um, I, I love being with my wife and my son. My son's 14, he's a, um, and um, you know, that's, that's a big thing for me. I play a little golf, sorry to say, <laughs> um, and, and I read a lot. Uh, Michael from Mrs. Hoot's second block language arts class at Durham Middle School in Ackworth, Georgia. Um, he wants to know what is your favorite genre to write, which is a great word. <clears throat> you know, genre is kind of whether it's going to be mysteries or romance or, you know, whatever. That's kind of the genre thing. Um, I, I, I think my favorite thing right now are the kids' books. I really enjoy the middle school books in particular. I like Maximum Ride. And then, you know, I still enjoy, I write detective uh, books for adults, although I'm about to do my first detective novel for, you know, sort of 12 and up, mm -hmm. called Confessions of a Murder Suspect. And the murder suspect is 14 years old. <laughs> Did she do it? I don't know. <laughs> Cordell, do you have something else you'd like to ask? Jay? Yes. Have you ever made any one of your books into a motion picture? Yes, we've uh, movies. We've made um, two Alex Crosses so far. Have been out with Morgan Freeman, and we have another Alex Cross that's going to come out October 26th with um, Tyler Perry. Uh, so that's very exciting. We actually watched the movie last night at my house, but you guys don't to get to see it till October. Um, we're middle school, uh, the worst years of my life. We're, we're we're just doing a screenplay right now. Um, Maximum Ride, um, they have a screenplay. So a lot of possibilities, but the Alice Cross movies we've shot already. We had a television show, Woman's Murder Club. It was on ABC a couple of years ago. Great. Um, your fan Joyce wants to know, what authors or layperson have inspired you the most? I think in my life, and we all need people like this in some way, shape, or form. Sometimes it's in the family, sometimes it's in school, sometimes it's on a sports team. My grandparents were both very inspired, especially my grandmother. She was, she was just one of these people, she said, you know, you're not going to be in the NBA because you're too short, even though I could dunk when I was a kid. <laughs> but um, you can do most other things that you want to do. So she was very encouraging. 
uh, in, in a smart way. And, and I always tell kids, you know, it's good to have your dream, and then it's, you, you should have a backup dream, <laughs> just in case that first dream doesn't quite work out. Mm -hmm. So you might you might say, well, I want to be a dancer. Well, that may not might not work. And so what else what else would you like to be besides a dancer? Let's uh, take another question from Allison. Was there a Jean Galetta in your life? Interesting question. There was. There was. Jean Galetta was my high school girlfriend. And uh, we're still friends. And so I, I used her name in, um, uh, in middle school and I thought she would get a kick out of it. And instead she sued me. No, no, no. She, uh, no, she enjoyed it. It's, it's a lot of fun for her. And it's, yeah, we both get a smile out of it, which is, which is kind of cool. And it's also nice that you can stay friends with, you know, somebody you knew from grammar school or high school or whatever. Ebony on Facebook has an interesting question. Which writer from previous centuries would you have been willing to work with? Well, I would have been willing to work with James Joyce, but he wouldn't have been willing to work with me. <laughs> I would have been willing to work with Shakespeare, but he might have been willing to work with me. Oh, I would have been willing to work with Dostoevsky, but he wouldn't have been willing to work with me. So, yeah. I would have been willing to work with Dickens. <laughs> he might have been willing to work with me. All right. Uh, Norma, what else is on your mind today for James? I would love to know what motivates you to become, well, to be a good writer. What motivates me to become a good writer? <clears throat> Somebody said, and I don't know who this was, but you're lucky if you find something in life that you really love to do, and that's true. And then you're unbelievably lucky if somebody will pay you to do what you love to do. So that's my situation. I love to write. I love to tell stories. It's my favorite thing. And I actually get paid to do it. So, so, and that's ideally what you want to do as you start looking and thinking about what you want to do in life. Whether it's you know, an editor or a teacher or an accountant. Or, there's a lot of things, you know, depending on what you like. If you like numbers, some people would like to be an accountant. Me, no thank you. <laughs> but you, know, you find something you really like and, 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 and then it's, it's, it's fun rather than work. Writing for me is not work. Mm. Speaking of that, what does a typical writing day look like for you? It looks like trouble. <laughs> um, I will write very early, uh, maybe 5.30 to 7 or so. Then I go out for a long walk. Um, then I'll write again in the morning, and then I'll write again after lunch. And I pretty much write seven days a week. Mohini, what do you have for James? Well, let's keep going. Taylor, do you have another question? Were you ever bullied in middle school or any? Was I ever bullied in middle school? Yeah, I was. As a matter, my, my mother was a teacher, um, which I think adds to the problems or can add to the problems because kids are going, "Hey, your mother's a teacher. You think you're so cool, you know, whatever." <laughs> um, yeah, so there, there was some bullying, and in those days, there were more. I don't know more. There were a lot of schoolyard fights, so there was a lot of. It was, you know, it was tricky. So yeah, and I don't like it. All right, Caitlin, who's also from Mrs. Hoot's class in Epworth, Georgia, um, has a very interesting question. I was wondering why. I don't like that start. To your <laughs> very interesting question yes. that you won't be able to answer. Yeah. I was wondering why you make your chapters so short, and is it a strategy of some sort? A strategy. Uh, it's more of an accident. I was writing a book called The Midnight Club, which is an adult book, and I was planning to flesh it out to add a lot more to the to the story. And I don't usually do this, but I read the 100 pages or so that I'd written, and I liked it. And I said, you know, this is very unique. This is different. This is a voice I haven't heard before. Where, and it's more like colloquial storytelling, meaning the way we tell stories to one another. We don't put in, we don't put in a lot of excess of detail or people would just go like, you know, get out of my face. You're just talking too much, you know. So it's more the way we tell stories. We, you know, we have a sense of, of you know, a beginning and middle and an end. We have a sense of how much our listeners want to hear. Um, so it's like that. It's, it's, it's a different kind of storytelling. And, and, and an interesting thing, and this is something uh, that, that people can try at school, have everybody write down the best story they have. Now the interesting thing you'll find is that there won't be great sentences, but it can still be a pretty terrific story. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing bad about great sentences either. But you can tell a very good story with a very plain language, very simple language. Mm -hmm. Hemingway, for example, used to do that. Mm -hmm. um, what advice can you give young writers? Write a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, write, 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 write. Read, read a lot. <laughs> but don't, you're going to do this anyway in the beginning. 
But ultimately, you need to you need to get a voice that's your voice, that expresses the way you see the world, the way you communicate, which is unique. Initially, the, the temptation is you'll start writing like somebody else you like. So what you want to do, you want to read a lot, you want to start getting those rhythms in your head, you want to see how other people do it, you want to write a lot because the more the, the more you write, you get the better you get at it. Um, and then eventually you want to develop your own style and voice. Another question from Allison? My favorite food is salad. What is yours and do you like to cook? Uh, my favorite foods I, I'm not allowed to eat anymore. Desserts. <laughs> so no desserts even though I love them. I, I like Italian food a lot. We had spaghetti and meatballs last night, which was my favorite food as a kid. It's still one of my favorite foods. Um, yeah, like that. <laughs> Sean, Salads are good, yeah. absolutely. Fish is good. Can <laughs> eat a lot of fish. Shauna, your fan, wants to know what was your biggest inspiration for the Big Kiddo Read program? Was um, how did you get going? On? I think part of the inspiration for Read Kiddo Read is was my son. Uh, when he was around age, he wasn't a big reader, um, and and it dawned on me that one that it was my job and my wife's job, it was our job. It's not the school's job to get you guys reading. It's the school's job to teach you to be better readers, but not to pick out books for you, and certainly not in the summer, where I think you know it's a really good idea if your parents are saying, here's some books that you should be reading. And they can be fun books. They can be cool books. They can be books that you're going like, I mean, to me, you want to read a book where when you get done with it, you just want to read another book. Um, and and that's, that's your, that's your job to some extent and your parents' job. And Read Kid or Read is a place where you can go. And pretty much every book on there is a book that, that, that you'll probably like. And there'll be a little write-up so you can get a sense of what the book is about and pick it out. Uh, and, and, you know, and your parents can certainly go there and your teachers and the school librarians. So it's, it's a good site. It's a valuable tool for you to find books that are really cool. Because a lot of kids will say that the reason they don't read more is they can't find books they like. Okay? Can't find books you like? Go to readkidorread.com. You will find some books you like. So what advice, wisdom, or encouragement do you have for students who are currently disinterested in reading? I, I think the most important thing is somewhere, where whoever you can talk to, whether it's at home or in school or whatever, just start looking for things to read that, you're, that, that you can get interested in. And, Look, it can be the Guinness Book of World Records. Real interesting, all sorts of queer stuff that you can talk to people about. And just if you read a lot of that, you'll just become a better reader. Uh, if you like nonfiction, you got to find stuff, you know, sp sports books if you're really into sports. You know, Mike Lupica writes some nice sports novels. Um, uh, it, it, comic books, fine. Graphic novels, sure. Manga, okay. Just read, read and read and read and read, and you'll you just get better at it. It's like anything else. I went to school, so I go, who likes soccer? Yeah, we all like soccer. Are you better now than or three years ago? Yeah, we're better now. Why? We play a lot. Okay. Same with reading. You read a lot, you get better at it. It's that simple. It really is. But you have to read a lot. And 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 and, and you won't read a lot unless you read some things that you like. I think we have time for one last question. So, Mohi, what's it oh, going to be? Mr. Patterson, do you ever get tired of being questioned like this? Yes. <laughs> I'm tired right now. I'm out of here. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, this is fun. Look, if I had to do this every day, you know, I don't have one of those every day, you know, like every day you got to go into the office and do the same. You know, if I had to do this every day, I wouldn't like it. But doing it every once in a while, I love it. Well, I think that's all we have time for you today. You guys were great. Yay. I had a great time. How about you, Jim? Yeah, the best time of my life. <laughs> no, it was very good. Now, you, you guys asked very, very good questions. All of you, and you remembered all your questions. Very good. <laughs> Thank that's you. That's not sir. so easy. And you're very bright. A bright group. Good questions. Thank you so much for being here. If there's one teacher at Hills Village Middle School you don't want to cross, it's Mrs. Ruth Donatello, Ugh. AKA Ruthless Donatello, or as I like to call her, the Dragon Lady. Ugh. People always talk about how great it is to get older. 
Adults keep talking about what's good for me. Yeah, well, asparagus is good for me, but it still makes me want to barf. Yeah. Wait, am I doing barf or throw up? Nobody gets kids reading like James Patterson. One more thing before I go. I'd like to introduce you to a new friend. Hi, everyone. Jamie Grimm has written his autobiography, I Funny. I am funny. He is very funny. In my book, I entered the Planet's Funniest Kid Comic Contest. James, did you hear about the karate champion who joined the army? What about him? It was pretty bad. First time he saluted, boom, he knocked himself out. And here's another. Teachers say our future depends on our dreams, but they won't let us sleep in class? Careful, Jamie. There are teachers out there. Oops, sorry. You want to hear another? Whoa. Save a few for December when your book comes out. Okay. See you all in December. See? The kid's funny.